Today we will be solving a linear program using the simplex algorithm with matrices. The first step is to convert the program into standard form. For our problem we convert it to minimization standard form which can be observed from the top of this slide. The program then needs to be separated into its various matrices. Uh, you can see the C row vector is the cost coefficients from the objective function. Um, the A matrix is all the technological coefficients from the constraints and the little b matrix is the right hand side for all the constraints. We then have to assign the basic variables which are denoted by the xb column vector and the non-basic variables which is denoted by the xn column vector. Since x1 and x2 are non-basic variables, they have a value of zero. So you can see graphically that the first iteration starts at the point zero, zero in the solution. Since the A matrix had three rows, we assigned three decision variables to be the basic variables so that when we form the B matrix, it makes a square matrix. The B matrix is formed from the column vectors in A that are associated which each of the decision variables that we chose to be the basic variables. The N matrix is formed similarly. The X1 column vector from matrix A is put in the first position of the N matrix while the X2 column vector from matrix A is put in the second column of the N matrix. The CB and CN matrices are formed from the original C matrix. Just like the B and N matrices, the CB and CN matrices are formed from the cost coefficients that are associated with the decision variables that are labeled in each XB and XN the inverse of the B matrix was also calculated to use in later steps. We then calculate B hat or the current XB values in the program by multiplying the inverse B matrix times the little b matrix. The current objective function value is then calculated by multiplying the cost coefficients from the basic variable times the inverse B matrix times the little b matrix. The values you can see is zero to check to see if the solution is optimal, we calculate the reduced cost value for the non-basic variables if they were to enter the basis. To calculate the reduced cost, we multiply the CB matrix times the inverse B matrix times the column vector of the decision variable that is in the A matrix minus the cost coefficient of that decision variable. In this case, the top example is x1, so we took the a1 column vector, which associates to the first column in the a matrix. Since we are minimizing the objective function, a positive value here means that the solution is not optimal. We now need to choose a decision variable that should enter the basis. We want to choose the variable that will help out the objective function value the most, which would be the most positive number. In this case, x2 has the greatest uh, reduced cost value. Since x2 was selected to enter the basis, we need to select a variable that is going to leave the basis. We do this by the min ratio test. To perform the test, we have to calculate a hat, which is the inverse b matrix multiplied by the column vector of the original a matrix that's associated with the entering decision variable. In this case, we use the column vector for x2, which is also a2 in the a matrix. For the min ratio test, we then transpose the b hat vector into a row and set that as the numerator, and then transpose the a hat vector into a row and set that as the denominator. The ratios are then calculated. If any of the a hat component values are negative, that column is excluded from consideration. From the options available, we choose the column with the smallest ratio. In this case, the x4 column, which equals 3, is the smallest value, so x4 should leave the basis. Once the leaving and entering variables are decided, we need to adjust the matrices to reflect the changes. We can see that the x2 decision variable has been put in 
the second row of the XB vector while X4 has been placed in the second row of the XN vector. The second column of the B matrix has been replaced with the column vector in the A matrix associated with X2 which was previously the second column of the N matrix which is now the column vector associated with X4. Of the second column of the CB matrix was updated with the cost coefficient from the X2 decision variable. The second column of the CN matrix was updated with the cost coefficient associated with the X4 decision variable. We calculated the inverse of the B matrix again to be used in later steps. On the graph in the bottom right corner we can see that with the addition of X2 into the basis that there should be an improvement in the objective function value. Since we're minimizing the objective function, then the value should reflect a more negative value. We then calculate B hat, which reflects the current basic variable values with the current basis, which we will be using in the min ratio test. The objective function value is then calculated with the new CB and B inverse matrices. As we predicted before, the objective function value decreased to negative 9. This marks an improvement. We then check to see if the solution is optimal by calculating the reduced cost of the non-basic variables. Since the reduced cost for the x1 variable is positive 8, we can conclude that the solution is not optimal and that x1 should enter the basis. Now that we know that x1 is entering the basis, we need to select a decision variable that is supposed to leave the basis. We do this first by calculating a hat. a hat is then transposed into a row vector and set as the denominator. b hat that we calculated previously is set as the numerator for the min ratio test. If any of the a hat component values are negative, then the columns that are associated with those in the min ratio test are then excluded from consideration. We can see that only the x3 column remains so that we can conclude that the x3 variable is leaving the basis. We need to update the changes we made with x1 entering the basis and x3 leaving the basis. We can see that x1 is in the first row of the xb matrix where x3 used to be and that x3 is in the first row of the xn matrix where x1 used to be. The first column of the B matrix is updated with the column vector from the A matrix associated with x1 while the first column in the N matrix is updated with the column vector in the A matrix associated with x3. The first column of the CB matrix is updated with the cost coefficient associated with x1 while the first column of the CN matrix is updated with the cost coefficient for x3. Again we calculated the inverse of the B matrix to use for later steps. We can see from the graph in the bottom right corner that with the addition of x1 into the basis it'll shift the iteration point in the x1 direction which should improve the objective function value. B hat is then calculated which reflects the values for the new basic variables. The new objective function value is then calculated with the new matrices. We can see that the value is negative 25 which marks an improvement because we are minimizing the objective function value. We then check for optimality by calculating the reduced cost for the non-basic variables. We can see that since the reduced cost for x4 is a positive 5 that the solution is not optimal and that x4 should enter the basis. We then calculate a hat by multiplying the inverse of b matrix times the column vector in matrix A associated with the entering variable x4. We can see that the column vector produced is negative. Since none of the values are positive, we can conclude that the solution is unbounded. We need to make a note that had the optimal solution been achieved through doing the iterations that the objective function value would have needed to be converted back to a maximization 
value by flipping the sign. Let's now use the simplex method to calculate the solution for the linear program in tableau form. Since we converted the problem to minimization standard form previously, let's use that same form again using the tableau method. It is important to note that the tableau form can be applied to a minimization or a maximization problem. Let's start out by creating an empty tableau with column headers for the row, the z value, the associated decision variables x1 through x5, the right hand side, a column for the min ratio, and a column for the basic variables. Let's fill in row 0 which correlates to the objective function. As you can see in the objective function, all the decision variables are on the right hand side of the equation. They need to be subtracted to the left hand side of the equation so that only number values are present on the right hand side. Now that all the decision variables are on the left hand side, let's fill in the cost coefficients in row 0. You note that z has a coefficient of 1. Let's fill in the rest of the tableau with the technological coefficients from the constraints. Let's also fill in the right hand side with the right hand side of the constraints and let's put zeros in the z column for rows 1, 2, and 3. Let's look at the x3, x4, and x5 columns. We can see that each column has a pivot which means that there is a 1 in one row and zeros in the other rows. These three columns correlate to the basic variable. We can see that the inverse B matrix is present in the tableau from rows 1, 2, and 3 for columns X3, X4, and X5. Let's watch this throughout each iteration. Also, the B hat column is also the same as the right hand side column. We can see from the graph that the iteration is being performed at the origin where x1 and x2 are equal to zero. This is correct because x1 and x2 are non-basic variables for this first iteration. To check for optimality, we look at row zero. If there is a positive coefficient in one of the non-basic variable columns, then we can see that the solution is not optimal. Conversely, if we were solving a maximization problem, then we would check to see if row 0 had any negative coefficient values. Since x2 has the highest coefficient value, we select that variable to be entered into the basis. Note that row 1, 2, and 3 for column x2 is the same as the a hat vector that we calculated previously for the entering variable. We now need to find the leaving variable by performing the min ratio test like we did previously. The ratios are calculated by dividing the right hand side or b hat by the entering variable column or a hat. If one of the components in the entering variable column is negative then we cannot perform the min ratio test for that row. Since row 2 had the lowest ratio, that means we select x4 to leave the basis. The entering column highlighted in blue and the leaving row highlighted in yellow intersect at a point highlighted green. This point needs to become the new pivot. Row operations need to be performed on rows 0, 1, and 3 using row 2 so that in the x2 column a 1 is only present in the pivot point and zeros are present in the rest of the rows. We can see that all that remains is a 1 in the pivot position and zeros in the other rows in the column. Also highlighted in yellow is the right hand side value which was the same value as the min ratio test and the basic variable column has been updated with x2. We can see from the graph that the addition of x2 into the basis raises the iteration point in the x2 direction which should also provide an improvement to the objective function value. Since our objective function is a minimization function we can see from the right hand side of row 0 that the value is negative which marks an improvement. To show consistency 
we notice that the B inverse matrix appears in the tableau in the same area we highlighted before. Um, that is rows 1, 2, and 3 in, in columns X3, X4, and X5. We can also see that the updated right hand side is the same as the B hat matrix in the second iteration for matrix form. To check for optimality, we look at row 0 to see if there are any positive coefficients for our non-basic variables. We can see that x1 has a positive 8 value which proves that the solution is not optimal and that x1 should enter the basis. To choose a leaving variable, we perform the min ratio test again by dividing the right hand side or b hat by the x1 or entering variable column or in this case a hat which is similar to the second iteration from the matrix form. We can see that there are negative values for row 2 and row 3 in the x1 column leaving row 1 to be the only viable option. We calculate the ratio for row 1 and see that it is a 2 so we can conclude that x3 should be leaving the basis. The entering variable column highlighted in blue and the leaving variable row highlighted in yellow intersect at the pivot point highlighted in green. Row operations should be performed on row 0, row 2, and row 3 using row 1 so that all that's left in column x1 is a 1 in row 1 and zeros in the other rows. We can see that the pivot highlighted in green was performed correctly. We can also observe on that row that the right hand side is equal to 2 which was the value of the min ratio and that the x1 variable has been updated in the basic variables column. We can observe from the graph that the addition of x1 into the basis shifts the iteration point into the x1 direction which also should mark an improvement to the objective function value. We can see from the right hand side of row 0 that the objective function value has decreased to negative 25 which marks an improvement since we are minimizing the objective function. We can also note that the B inverse matrix appears in the same position uh, row 1, row 2, and row 3 uh, columns x3, x4, and x5 which is the same B inverse matrix from the third iteration of the matrix form of the simplex algorithm. B hat from the third iteration also appears on the updated version of the right hand side. We do an optimality check by observing row 0 to see if any of the non-basic variables uh, have a value that is positive. We can see that x4 has a positive 5 value so that it should enter the basis. We can see that the entering variable column or a hat which we previously calculated in the third iteration for matrix form is negative. So that means that since there isn't a positive value in any of the components then the solution is unbounded.